Hello, good morning, students. I am Sushil Kumar Athar, Assistant Professor in HOD of the Geology Department at Calicut Unitary University. Today, we'll discuss about excretory system of human being. Okay, so we'll discuss one by one the topic. The topic of this discussion of today is we are going to discuss about the excretion. What is excretion? Is excretory system mode of ex modes of different modes of excretion and formation uh, sorry excretory system of human and lastly the formation or synthesis of urea okay so first modes of excretion or oh, before going modes of excretion let's first know what is the excretion is excretion is nothing we can say that it's the process of getting rid getting rid of the waste material from our body okay so the sweat the urine all these are uh, a type of waste material uh, and fecal matters are all excreted so excretion we say that getting rid of the waste materials from our body and the whole system which is involved in do in doing or performing the excretion is called as the excretory system okay but in different organism depending upon their habitat they have adapted differently and they have developed uh, specific organs to perform their respective type of excretion so and uh, where they live they also determine how they will uh, perform their excretion so depending upon the type of uh, excretory product which is to be getting uh, to to get rid of from the body there are different types of uh, or different modes of excretion so the generally the basic fundamental thing which is produced uh, during the uh, during the uh, 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 in excretion the first product which is uh, formed after the the uh, digestion of food or whatever we take like protein or carbohydrate so the first th thing the main product is ammonia and ammonia is very toxic it cannot be handled and it needs very high uh, some it, it is to be dissolved in sufficient amount of water but animals which are living in aquatic system or aquatic uh, or in aquatic body or you can say in water surrounded by water they can uh, they are uh, generally uh, able to uh, excrete ammonia directly okay so the organisms which excrete ammonia directly from their body to the outside are called as ammonotelic or the process is called as ammonotelism so the primary excretory product is the ammonia which is very toxic so the ammonia is released outside aquatic animals like protozoa because they are unicellular so whatever it is produced inside the body after the uh, after getting the proteins and deamination they will remove the ammonia nidarians sponges polychaetes of annelida mollusca uh, some mollusca crustaceans water insects echinoderms and teleost fishes and aquatic amphibians and their larval forms so basically they all what we can understand from here is all over the whatever organisms or even some mammals some organisms which live not mammals some organisms like we see here see here like amphibians amphibians because they live in both water uh, both in uh, land as well as in water so in the land form they will develop they have metamorphosis like in case of frog and salamander so in the land form they will take the help of excretion from their kidney and uh, accordingly they have the uh, the their adaptation but in case of the larval forms which is like fish like structure or have a, a water uh, uh, living in water uh, they have developed strategies to live in the water so there they perform uh, they, they they release the excreted product in the form of ammonia so they are ammonotelism say at that time so these are the different types of organism coming to urea urea is the next phase of we can say here gradual the 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 power of organisms to dissolve much and much amount of 
uh, uh, toxic substances which is produced from the metabolic process or catabolic process. So, urea is less toxic than the uh, less toxic than ammonia, but it needs water. So, again, uh, but the amount of water is very less. So, the organism which releases waste material in the form of urea are called as ureotelic and the process is called as or the mechanism you can see the mechanism is called as ureotelism okay the so what are the animals like marine fish adult amphibians mammals these are uh, these are the uh, animals which actually release urea uh, generally mammal release urea through the urine okay again next one is the uric acid uric acid is another again uh, a very highly uh, concentrated form you can say of the waste material because the bot the animal have the strategies have developed the strategies to conserve more and more amount of water because it may be not getting the sufficient amount of water so they have developed strategies to conserve more and more amount of water if it is diluted so it it, it can be in the form of urea but, but if there is no less amount of water so what happens the body in the evolution process the the animal during the evolution process they have developed the, uh, another uh, one and another enzymes because of that what happens urea uh, ammonia is converted to urea and from urea to uric acid so here what happens their animals releases uric acid and as we as we know those release uric, uh, uric acid are called as uricotelic and the process or the mechanism of getting rid of uric acid from the body is uricotelism. So, who are the animals which definitely uh, which generally perform this type of excretion? The terrestrial insect, terrestrial snails. You must have marked it, okay, reptiles, birds, and the uh, uh, these are all adapted to conserve the water so you can see how it is different like uh, they uh, the like birds they do not urinate they directly release uric acid in in mammal what happens they they release uric uh, urea through urine okay but in uh, they do not release urine so they have developed to conserve more and more amount of water they develop the the biological system the metabolism the biochemistry has accordingly adapted uh, so that they can produce uric acid and you must have seen reptiles birds basically you must have seen birds doing uh, shit what we generally in normal language we say shit is the uric acid uh, and uh, insect whatever you see small uh, small drops or small uh, dots of house fly you must have seen black spots they are the uric acids and snails you must have definitely seen snails house snail uh, in the garden snails you must have seen wherever they go they release excretory material and which looks like like um, uh, like brown, it's blackish brown like uh, uh, in texture in in color and in texture so you can uh, observe that okay so these are the different types of mechanism or modes of excretion so here in a pictorial way you can understand that this is the amino group how the amino uh, basically it is the animal bothered about the animals bother about the uh, release of or the excretion of the amino group so amino group is derived from where it is obtained from amino acids like the protein is the source from protein uh, proteins are broken down and amino acids are released and amino acids is again uh, there are a series of events through which a biochemical process through which amino group is is obtained and likewise the nucleic acid also they are all broken down to nitrogenous bases like purine pyrimidines and they again broken to form the final amino group so all you can see nucleic acid proteins they all ultimately ending to formation of an amino group and that amino group is passed or you can say excreted uh, from uh, from the body of animal in different way like in fish you see most aquatic animals including many fish release ammonia directly here you see mammals, most amphibians, shark, some bony fishes, they release urea, uh, the amino as a uh, urea and in, in, uh, in birds, insect, 
reptiles and land snails you see uric acid okay so this way we are here about now in addition to that there are other excretory product okay like what amino acids itself directly amino acids are sometimes because there are some animals which do not uh, convert amino acids to uh, they perform it but to a less extent they also release amino acid directly like example like unio which is an example of mollusca limnia uh, echino some echinoderms like asterias then tmao which is uh, the short form of trimethylamine oxide one third of the waste by teleosteres teleosteres uh, one third of the uh, waste material is released in the form of trimethylamine oxide like then guanine spider releases excretory product which is called as guanine creatine creatinine hyper hyperuric acid ornithuric acid so these are the some of the examples of all the different types of product now coming to human different organ uh, different organs are related to that so as i told that the excretory system is that which are related with the total process of excretion so in human the kidney a pair of kidney bean shaped uh, kidney ureters okay attached with each of the kidney so it's a one pair of ureter urinary bladder one urinary bladder and finally urethra so these four components are the uh, main uh, four are the four thing uh, four components uh, uh, constitute the human excretory system kidney ureters and urinary bladder and urethra so like here we can see how the kidney uh, looks like so let's discuss it in two way external and internal Ext in uh, if we see the external structure of the kidney what we can see is here it is a transverse section uh, let's not going here L let's see here here we see the kidney here we see the kidney right here we see the kidney okay here is the kidney another is here is kidney and you see the placement how it is there like you can see the here is the t10 the thoracic vertebra t10 t11 t12 so you see here it is more or less around t11 on t12 here and the uh, beginning with this region t12 t11 to 212 and here l3 up to l3 you can see here they the placement of kidney is like that so the and also it is en encased in the thoracic uh, ribs like 12th rib you see in the ribs ribs region uh, in the lower ribs region it is inside and it is you can see the placement the orientation and the placement the location is between uh, in is from the t11 12 to l3 lumbar uh, uh, vertebrae 3 in between that it remains okay and it is in the encased inside the rib cage and here the 12th rib also support that thing and you see how did it looks like here also you see this transverse section and better we directly we can see like it looks like this okay so this is the kidney structure and uh, this part is the convex part and this part is the concave part from here you see this one the ureter will be formed or ureter will be create uh, will be originated so this is the thing so this is a convex structure this uh, depression concavity is also called as hilus which i think uh, yes which is hilus so you see this is this kidney is the reddish brown color bean shape so that's why you also have seen or you must must be knowing about the kidney beans okay rajma jodu joda ko auchi so it looks like that so reddish brown bean shaped bean shape means this is the convex and this is the concave structure 
at the back of the abdomen this is the uh, actually in the front because this is the vertebral column so vertebral column in front of the vertebral column we have the abdomen so in the back of the abdomen it is in the back of the back side of the abdomen the length is 3 th 10 to 13 centimeter around this much th 10 to 13 in an adult okay so 30 10 to 13 centimeter in length and 5 to 7 centimeter in width not this much this much 2 to 3 centimeter in thickness okay so this is the total the uh, the the size of the uh, kidney each kidney okay and the way of each kidney is around 20, 130 to 170 grams in in an adult human and uh, it is important also to note that the right kidney the right kidney one here we see here the right this one so the right kidney is the lower than the left kidney okay right kidney why because the right kidney is we, we have the liver in the right side so to accommodate the space to give more space to to accommodate the liver the kidney is a bit lower positioned okay so this is the the external structure of the kidney right then internal structure in internal structure we see here also you can see the internal structure actually include these three things these things like capsule cortex medulla pelvis pyramid renal papilla renal column of bertini and histologically we will go seeing the nephron and uh, he, uh, we will see each nephron how what is the constitution how nephrons uh, looks like and what are the different components of the nephrons we will see that later so let's go one by one so first the internal structural capsule so this is this whole structure what you see is the vertical section you can say or the longitudinal section of the kidney okay where we can see how it looks from the periphery to the inner side okay so the longitudinal section if we see so here we see the first capsule so this is the outer layer and this one is the capsule okay this one is the capsule you can see i think you can easily see the diagram here you see the capsule first outer layer this the thick layer is the capsule and this provides a type of give uh, outer covering protects it then you get cortex region this is the cortex region this one this to this is the cortex region So this reason is the uh, this reason we can say this reason from this reason we can say cortex reason okay so this from this reason the this is this not here suppose up to this yeah, this reason is the cortex reason okay here to here blue lining I am what I am saying renal cortex okay this is the cortex reason which is just below the capsule then comes the medulla region medulla region is this one this this part you can uh, represent with suppose i can represent it with a red color so here right so this is the here we see the medulla region okay so below the cortex we have medulla then and we have pelvis so here you see the from here you can see the uh, capsule medulla uh, this is the uh, capsule this is the renal medulla and here we see the uh, the from here we see different likes pyramids this uh, sorry uh, we have pelvis this reason renal pelvis this reason and we have pyramids which is this one right pyramid this one so let's erase so that it will be easier to grasp it another one by one so this one is the pyramid okay 
and here this region is the pelvis region okay this total region is the pelvis region and next one is the renal papilla papilla is this one this region papilla is this region here here this part is the papilla okay so this is the uh, this is the pyramid this is the uh, renal papilla then column of bertini the last one here it joins here and it forms the column of bertini okay here so this is about the total structure so again uh, there are this in this you see fine the main things but again we can also see what are the things in the structure is like here what happens uh, all this uh, cortex and medulla in the medulla part you see the all this pyramid like structure this pyramid have a base which is the which is uh, uh, which is the here we see the pep, uh, means uh, just below the pyramid we have papilla uh, papilla and from there we have this region this is the minor calyx this minor calyx will all join to form the major calyx okay the major calyx and for all the major calyx will join to form the this bigger portion that is the this one is the pelvis so one by one from uh, from pyramid to the renal papilla then minor calyx all the minor calyx means this branch one then they will form join to form major calyx then from major calyx all the major calyx will form join to form renal pelvis from renal pelvis all will connect to to form the ureter okay so this is the different structure here you see uh, the renal vein which is getting inside oh sorry uh, it is taking the uh, the the filter the uh, the blood which is been uh, you can say uh, um, uh, not uh, taking out the blood from the kidney which is you can say uh, 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 deoxygenated or which is impure you can say and the renal artery which is getting the uh, oxygenated blood or the more pure blood okay and here the hilus and we discussed all these things right then coming to structure of the nephron so what is nephron nephron is the fundamental fundamental unit fundamental unit uh, you can we can say that all the kidney is made up of con made up con made up of a small uh, elongated minute uh, tubular like structure provided with a capsule that is called as the nephron so the whole total unit the fundamental unit we can say like each wall have a fundamental unit like brick brick mane gote kanthor gote jemti gote gote bricks jemti gote fundamental unit kahi pariba semiti the fundamental unit of the uh, kidney is the nephron okay and the nephron have again two different component first component is malpighian body which is also called as renal corpuscle and the another is the renal tubule so it has a corpuscle that we i will show you and it has a renal tubule and in that let's see why to bother first you can see here this total this one this one is the biomen capsule glomerulus constituting the malpighian tubule uh, corp corpuscle and from here you see all the way it is going to form this structure and this all this leaving this one so you see the yellow part and this red part the yellow part is a nephron this is not the nephron this is a collecting tubule so this is the 
uh, the tubular part of the nephron okay so that two component malpighian body and the renal tubule so the malpighian body or the renal uh, corpuscle have two things endothelium uh, they have components like endothelium of glomerulus and uh, basement membrane epithelium of the biomembrane capsule where which include podocyte i will show you okay and renal tubule have neck proximal convoluted tubule which is in short called, called as pct loop of henle then distal convoluted tubule which is also called as dct and the collecting duct okay so these are the part okay oh, sorry i forget to mention that collecting duct is also one of the part of the nephron but we generally consider it is generally not, not collecting duct these three are uh, part of the nephron right then so let's see the glomerulus structure so uh, we are discussing malpighian body malpighian body so malpighian body here we saw the biomembrane capsule what is capsule capsule is here the thing is capsule is about here the structure is about what is malpighian body the, there is there remains some a bit of confusion sometimes malpighian body or renal capsule uh, corpuscle and biomembrane capsule and glomerulus so exactly what the biomembrane capsule is it's a capsule only it's a capsule only this one okay and the glomerulus is this one the the red or you can say the uh, the artery the 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 capillary inside them is the glomerulus okay here you see and the total this uh, this glomerulus and this cup is biomembrane capsule so basically you can say the uh, biomembrane capsule and the glomerulus compose composed the malpighian body Biomembrane capsule and glomerulus constitute the malpighian body. So I think there should not be any confusion from here now. Okay. Then let's. Uh, let's see to the biomen capsule glomerulus the total renal corpuscle structure here you see this is the uh, yes the glomerulus uh, the biomen capsule is here the capsule like structure the capsule total covering it okay and uh, the the glomerulus and uh, the the glomerulus is nothing but the capillary i told you so the capillary have provided are provided with endothelium and endothelium are also modified uh, are so modified are, uh, endothelium are the modified epithelium and they are modified to form overlappings and they also have porous uh, more porosity you can say more leaks so that uh, the uh, the exchange can be then the excreted material can be exchanged so that it can be collected and it will be excreted out so that is the thing what we will see here and the biomembrane capsule which is very closely attached mane bio bio mane biomembrane capsule ro jo tar lining ochi au capillary ro jo lining ochi endothelium pura touch hai ki pura close each mane close hai ki pura thaye to tankro separation ta bahut mane janiba ta bahut mane ye difficult ochi but eithi ame dekhi pariba ki jo glomerulus ku dui type ro mane gote asuchi mane jo ta blood nei ki asuchi coming inside that is called as the efferent arteriole jo ta nei ki asuchi and jo ta nei ki jauchi that is called as the sorry jo ta nei ki jau nei ki asuchi that is the afferent arteriole aur jo ta nei ki jauchi that is called as the efferent arteriole okay eta nei ki asuchi mane jemti pipe pani ghar ko asuchi tapre ghar ko pani tum use kalo bahar ko chhad lo like that 
सो ग्लोमरुल अफरेंट एटेरियल एट एफ अफरेंट ए एफ एफ ई आर ई एन टी एफरेंट नहीं कि आसब ग्लोमेरुल फिल्ट्रेसन हम देन इट विल गो आउट फ्रम द ग्लोमेरुल इफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल सो द आर्टेरियल जो डिड हो जाए भितर छंदा छंदी है पूरा रही से अच्छी मेकानिजम जोटा कि नेक्स्ट क्लास अलग पढ़ा से टाइम एक्सचेज हम एंड से कलेक्शन है कि ग्लोमेरुल ग्लोमेरुल एफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल बाहर जीव इंटरेस्टिंग ये गोटे जिनस हो कि एफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल जो अच्छी तार थिकनेसटा मानने कम अच्छी आ तार ल्यूमेन स्पेस बेस अच्छी से मोर एमाउंट मैं बेस एमाउंट्र ब्लडटा फ्लो हो पार भितर को गला जिते बड़े ये जाऊँच दिस् एफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल इज मान तार ल्यूमेटा टे कम मान डायमिटरटा मानने कम अच्छे तो कौन हो कौन हो प्रेसर क्रिएट हुए प्रेसर ये क्रिएट है मैंने ये आउ प्रेसर हो कि फिल्ट्रेसन ताक इजी कै तो लास्ट यहाँ तार फंक्शन मानने अफरेन्ट कैनाल टे मे आर्टेरियल टे मान ल्यूमेन बड़ रार छोट रो एंडपाई भितर बेस मानने प्रेसर क्रिएट हुए जोटा कि हेल्प कै मान यूरीन मान फिल्ट्रेसन ग्लोमेरुल ग्लोमेरुल फिल्ट्रेसन जो नेक्स्ट क्लास डिस्कसन करवा तो ये जो अच्छी स्ट्रक्चर ये आम देखिपर तो कि बायोमेन कैप्सूल आम फास्ट ये देखने कौन थी एंडोथेलीयम अफ द ग्लोमेरुलास एंड बेसमेंट मेम्ब्रेन तापर हूँ एपिथेलीयम अफ द बायोमेन कैप्सूल मानने ओके हियर यू सी एटा हूँ तार एपिथेलीयम ये यहाँ सब तार एपिथेलीयम रहा ता तले रहा तार जेनेल ग्लोमेरुल तार एंडोथेलीयम रही कि सरी तार पूरा एपिथेलीयम ये तो बाहर रहा आ भितर जो रहा ये पूरा मडिफाइड हो देख यो आम अच्छी This is the, this is the blood vessel. This is the blood vessel. But this blood vessels, आओ ये टा जो देखा जाओ ची तुमको purple color रो, आओ empty empty देखा जाओ ची. This is nothing but माने blood vessels ऊपरे पूरे empty माने biomin capsule रो गोटे layer टा empty ऊपरे लगी के आओ ची. That is the cells of epithelial endothelial cell of this. बायोमेन कैप्सूल कि तार एंडोथेलीयम आर एंडोथेलीयम पूरा पाखापाखी रे एक रि से पूरा मिसिकी हेला बेले रो तो तुम्हें कौन देख पोडोसाइट सेक्सुअल एमती देखा लाइक पूरा एमती है कि रमती है कि ओके सो ये तुमको देखा न्यूक्लीयस स्ट्रक्चर तार रहा बट एमती है कि पूरा हाथ तो फिंगर लाइक पूरा है कि रोब बहुत गुड़ा है कि पूरा एमती रोज से पूरा देख पार तुम्हें छंदा छंदी है जो देखा जाटा हूँ पोडोसाइट्स ओके दिस इज स्पेशल टाइप ऑफ सेल्स पोडोसाइट्स ऑफ ग्लोमेरुल ग्लोमेरुल एपिथेल एपिथेलीयम एंडोथेलीयम आउ इन क्लोज एसोसीएसन विथ द एंडोथेलीयम अफ द कैपिलारीज दैट इज वेरी क्लीय मैंने अटाच टू दैट एंड दैट एक्चुअली हेल्प्स इन 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 एब्जर्बसन दैट वी विल डिस्कस लेटर Because we are discussing about the structure only here. Here you can see that how the podocytes looks. Podocyte are what? I mean, it is what? It is the main body. Then it is primary process. I mean, it is what? It is primary process. It is what? It is primary process. I mean, half the time it is finger time. I mean, it is what? Podocytes are what? It is nucleus. It is what? It is body. It is what? It is projection. It is what? It is what? It is finger. It is what? It is what? It is finger. It is what? Primary process. A primary process. I mean, finger too. It is what? It is what? It is what? फिंगर भितर भी जब आम देखा ये तुम देखिपर जदि फिंगर भितर मान सपोज एमती है कि अच्छी फिंगर तो फिंगर भितर भी तार एमती 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 है कि मैंने प्राइमरी प्रोसेस दिस इज द प्राइमरी प्रोसेस प्राइमरी प्रोसेस प्राइमरी प्रोसेस से पुणी आ मैंने सरफेस एरिया बढ़े मैंने डबल सरफेस एरिया बढ़े सो दैट मैंने ट्रांसपोर्ट मैंने एक्सचेंज ऑफ मटेरियल कैन बी डन सो दिस इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द द ग्लोमेरुल ओके नाउ ये 
ATA. Uh, let us see. So, epithelial uh, endothelium of glomerulus, hela, basement, hela, epithelium of the capsule, hela. then uh, coming to the renal tubule. Renal tubule, we are here. Uh, uh, here you can we can see sorry here we can see the renal tubule here i uh, i can also show you the blood supply of the kidney along with the nephron the tubule okay so eight hi tumme dekhi paribo eta hochi eta hochi biomin capsule hela eti tar glomerulus hela this first part, this first part is, this first neck region to up to this region you can say, this is the proximal convoluted tubule, okay, okay, Mane proximal, mane. this is the proximal near to the main body, okay, so like this is the our head, rohila. Eta amaro, eighty jota joint rohila, eta this is proximal, this is the distal. Same the eighty tara, eta main body joti main rauchi concern, eta rohila, tara attachment joto pakhe rohila, interior rohila, that is called as the proximal. So, this is the proximal tubule. Then you come to the loop of Henley. Okay, here you see loop of Henley. Loop ochi got a U shape, empty hiki ochi. Then you find the distal convoluted tubule, okay, distal convoluted tubule and it will join to the collecting tubule. Now again interesting thing is here, interesting thing is here, when you see this, this loop of Henley, a part of the proximal pore, uh, proximal pore, uh, loop of Henle ro do it as mane loop of Henle re tinta jins ochi. This loop of Henle re tinta jins ochi. Gota ochi descending limb. Tapre ochi U turn loop. This one, this ochi eta ochi descending limb. Tapre eta ochi loop. Tapre eta ochi ascending limb. So descending limb re tome dekhi bo ki descending limb a part re tome dekhi pare bo. Thik ochi. Tapre eti patra hi jibo. Thin hi jibo. Puni eti puni eti loop timing re hi. Thetike thin rohi thi bo. Loop timer jethe uthi bo. Se timer thetike puni thik hi gachi. So this is the criticality of the structure of the uh, the uh, the uh, the loop of Henle. Okay. So these are the structure. Now. So these are the structure. Oh, sorry. Then uh, we have loop of fan layer distal uh, convolutive and collecting duct. Collecting duct, eighty ame the key pariva. So eighty we bolobabre the key pariva ame key. Sabu hella pore collection hella pore a distal convertible pura rela last age I keep collecting doctor I guess about Jodi wo. so empty eta kali eta hocha gote empty bohut gura millions there are millions of glomerulus and glomeruli and the they are connected all the tubules and all so much the jasi jai ki empty gote gote branching the sabu gote gote jai ki join hai tibem sabu collecting duct puni jodi ki jodi jodi ki tabra ki finally ureter theory gote be Okay, set a jagi puni calyx, minor calyx, major calyx, then pelvis, then ureter. So it is a very collective process. Manage empty mane gharu choto choto nali gote bharichi, nali to border nali, border nali to border nali, tapra nala, tapra jaiki, nadi, nadi ru jaiki, sabu, samandra, mane samandra ru jaiki misuchi, say bola. Okay, so this way it is going. Then here you see the uh, different, uh, the bl blood supply. You see the renal vein. Uh, First, let's see the uh, the supply of the uh, blood from the dorsal aorta. Dorsal aorta, anibo, and this is the renal artery. Renal artery brings the blood to the uh, uh, to the kidney, which is the branch of uh, dorsal aorta. And coming here, it will branch. It will come here and it will branch like it will first here it, in the segment level. Eighty pelvis region rehi se gode. 
branching arambha karibo that is a segmental artery then again it will branch uh, it is segment hey gola gote gote segment hela segment ro branch hela interlobular artery then interlobular artery gola pore they becomes mane pura pyramid ko cover kari ki gote cover kari ki thai that is the uh, the arti uh, arcuate artery and articulate artery pore gote gote taro eta hochi uh, interlobular uh, e jo red color dekha jochi interlobular artery mane artery interlobular artery puni jai ki au uh, jai ki puni divide hi jibo arterioles uh, mane capillaries hi jibo and that will form the part of the glomerulus from glomerulus ethi puni misiki se kon hobo puni uh, gote aru ko jibo branching hi jibo emte hi ki एठू एफरेन्ट आसला ब्रांचिंग है कैपिलारी रहा आउ गए ये से भाई है कि ब्रांचिंग एक्सचेंज है ये सब पुण जोड़े जोड़ जोड़े है कि एफरेन्ट है कि पुणी जब ये गोटे तेल यहाँ है कैपिलारीज एफरेन्ट आफरेन्ट आगु तैयारी फ्रम वेयर द इंटरलोबुलर आर्टेरी एम एमती जोड़ी यू ग्लोमेरुलस ये सब जोड़ला एफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल एफरेन्ट एफरेन्ट मान आर्टेरियल है यू पुणी जॉन करके इट विल फॉर्म द इंटरलोबुलर आर्टेरी देन अगेन इंटरलोबुलर आर्टेरी विल जॉन टू फॉर्म द आर्क्युएट देन इंटरलोबुलर सरी आर्क्युएट भेन देन आर्क्युएट भेन टू तापर जा इट विल फॉर्म द सेगमेंटल वेन तापर फाइनली इट विल गो टू द रेनाल वेन मान गोटे मान गोटे एंड को गला गोटे एंड्रु ग ब्रांचिंग है आउ गोटे एंड्रु ब्रांचिंग होकर अच्छी से पुणी नहीं कि जॉन करके आस मैंने जाऊँगी सप्लाय कर आसूँ सो दिस् विल गो ब्रांच रिली डिवाइड एंड मीट टू द ग्लोमेरुलर लेवल दे आर अल द कनेक्ट एंड विल कम बैक् टू दिस् येगला ग्लोमेरुलर पार्ट ये तुम देखिपार ये भी हैपर ये सब देख इफरेन्ट आर्टेरियल सब डिड हो पूरा तापर यहाँ हो मैं ये बाहर ना से पेरी ट्यूबुलर कैपिलर हो जोटा कि पूरा कलेक्टिंग ट्यूबुल कि तुम तो नेफ जो डिजिटल कनवेलेटेड ट्यूबुल कि प्रक्सीमल कनवेलेटेड ट्यूबुल कि लुप ऑफ फैनली पूरा कवर करके अच्छे ए सब कवर कर कवर करी तापर एटा आणव तुम नहीं कि आसब नहीं कि आसला कलेक्टिंग कौटि आस लास्ट फाइनाली इंटरलोबुलर भेन आस इंटरलोबुलर भेन तापर आर्टिकुलेट भेन मुझे कहली तापर आर्टिकुलेट पर इंटरलोबुलर भेन देन इट विल गो टू द फॉर्मेशन ऑफ द रेनाल भेन एंड फाइनली इट विल जॉन टू रिलीज फ्रॉम द वेना कावा ओके सो दिस इज अबाउट द ब्लड सप्लाई टू द किडनी आई थिंक यू मस्ट हैव गॉट इट सो द डायग्राम्स आर ऑल्सो गुड फाइनली द यूरेटर एंड यूरिनरी ब्लडर एंड द यूरेथर यूरेटर इज यू कैन सी हियर अ पेयर ऑफ यूरेटर विच इज विच इज ऑल जॉइंट फ्रॉम द पेलविस रीजन एंड जॉइंट Uh, ureter the finally urine is carried from this ureter pair of ureter and finally they meet at the bladder which is a collecting point you can say it's a membranous muscular and hollow structure bag like structure which collect that uh, urine for temporary time and it holds around it can holds around in general it 300 cc or ml of urine but if time requires it's it can contain more amount of uh, uh, urine so, okay so that is the thing and the location of the uh, urinary bladder is behind the pubic symphysis and this is the position yeah ureter ha have also i forgot to mention that ureter have you can say uh, divide into two different region there's the renal pelvis and ureter proper the, the this one is the ureter proper and the initial portion is the renal pelvis now lastly the urethra urethra is the final you can see the anterior portion uh, uh, anterior portion which is projected outside through which uh, there is an orifice through which the urine is excreted out in male and female there is a difference in structure in female it is shorter the urethral and the tube tube tubular structure is very short around 4 cm which opens uh, above the uh, vaginal orifice and it is different and uh, in case of male there is another around uh, more elongated uh, structure tubular structure which is around 20 cm and which may be around 20 cm and it has a different uh, orifice in case of female they they have different orifice to uh, uh, different orifice for um, urine and for their uh, uh, vaginal discharge but in case of male the the orifice the urethra is the common from where the uh, the semen as well as the urine both are uh, released from uh, released from inside to the outside 
so there is a common orifice and common structure in case of male uh, in case of male with respect to the urethra okay so these are the basic structure of the uh, urinary system and let's just briefly know uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, how the urine is formed the process of urine formation begins uh, or synthesis or the formation of urea actually involves the cycle uh, uh, fun a very important cycle that is also called as ornithine cycle urea cycle or with the name of the credits of craves and hansley cycle who discovered this together so let's discuss in brief and you can understand this is a picture and you can know this is to remember that what are the different steps the fundamental four things in the cycle is citrulline arginosuccinate arginine and ornithine how this is formed carbon dioxide released from the metabolism from the general glycolysis krebs cycle process the carbon dioxide is formed from the carbohydrate the ammonia ammonia or ammonium form is formed from the the deamination process in the protein metabolism or the nucleic acid metabolism then they join with the help of an enzyme that is called as carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 uh, we are not going to discuss about synthetase 1 and 2 uh, but let's know about it that it's a there is another isomer of this uh, sorry um, uh, another similar uh, enzyme uh, of this synthetase 1 and 2 but this carbamoyl phosphate synthetase 1 is used here which uses 2 atp synthetase means it include 2 atps we should also know and i i think you should also know students that there is a difference between synthase and synthetase synthase synthetase includes whenever there is a requirement of atp for the formation of a new substance then we say it as with a with an enzyme then it is synthetase okay so 2 atp here is used to form carbamoyl phosphate because it's a phosphate addition of the phosphate group also from uh, uh, atp phosphate group is added and this carbamoyl phosphate is again you uh, is again formed to create citrulline through ornithine trans carbamoylase after formation of citrulline citrulline is uh, again used uh, again fused with as, uh, aspartate with the help of atp and magnesium ion and in the presence of an enzyme that is arginosuccinate synthetase to form arginosuccinate and arginosuccinate is again uh, broken to release fumarate with the help of arginosuccinase and arginine <coughs> here arginine is broken down to form ornithine and uh, urea is released and uh, sorry uh, arginine is broken so that ornithine will be created and urea is released by using the water and with the help of an enzyme that is called arginase and finally ornithine is again used here so it will be uh, ornithine is also used here by the ornithine transcarbamylase to form the citrulline thus the urea cycle is continues and you finally see here the urea is formed all this process happens inside the liver and you can see it has been shown that this part is in the is happening inside the liver cells and liver in the mitochondria of the liver and this part is happening in the cytoplasm okay so these are the final things today we discussed in the next class we'll discuss about the uh, the filtration uh, filtration the process of filtration of uh, of uh, uh, through the glomerular filtration rate and glomerular